Hello, Indoor Gardeners. Welcome back to another episode of the Indoor Gardener podcast with Greg Dreiss. I'm your host. You can catch the Indoor Gardener podcast on Anchor.fm, Spotify, YouTube, and pretty soon all the major podcast platforms. Also want to ask that you check us out on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, I have a couple pages on Facebook, The Indoor Garden, Greg's Lawn and Lawn Service and Garden Care. If you have any questions, email us at those sites or at gregslawnandgarden.gmail.com or send us a message through Anchor. Today's episode is entitled One Last Meal for Mealybugs. <clears throat> Mealybugs and fungus gnats are among some of the more difficult, or at least the mo- more prevalent, pain-in-the-neck insects or bugs that you're going to have on your plants. And mealybugs prevent, present their own special issues. Um, as you probably know, there's a lot of houseplants susceptible to them. Among those are aglonema, coleus, cactus, dracaenas, ferns, ficus, hoyas, big-time problem on hoyas, jade, orchids, palms, philodendrons, Schifflera poinsettias, monsteras, and even some herbs, including rosemary and sage, quite common on rosemary. Well, what do they look like? <clears throat> to me, they kind of look like little pill bugs that have been zombified. They can be pinkish white, they're soft body insects, and they're covered with a white, waxy, cottony material, which is like a little fluff, like cotton candy. So if you see cotton candy on your leaves, or little bugs that look like a little pill bug, or even that look like the, the shells of a lobster type of thing. Check them out because you might have mealy bugs. Um, and unlike their relatives, they're related to scales. Most species retain their legs throughout their life and can move around. There is a crawling stage with mealy bugs, but because they tend to find a place and start sucking off those plant juices, it looks like they don't move, but they do move around quite a bit. They remove plant sap from above ground parts, especially stems, leaf junctures, and new growth. So if you're over fertilizing or if you're a happy fertilizer fan like I am and you're pumping your plants full of nitrogen, mealybugs aren't going to go into woody stems. They're going to seek out the softer tissue and that's what they start feeding on. They're feeding weakens and stunts plants causing yellow leaves, defoliation, wilting, and general plant decline. So if your plant looks sick, check it out for mealybugs. At first, they can be hard to find because usually when you see a picture of mealybugs, you see a big infestation or cotton candy. Check the tips of the leaves, uh, the joints where the branches come together with the main part of the, the plant. They like to hide out there because it's hard to get insect controls down in there. And also look out for what just looks like cotton candy on the plants. Now, there's a citrus mealybug mealybug, that injects a toxin while feeding on the plant that causes plant malformation. So leaves that don't look right, stems that don't look right. If you have the citrus mealybug, it's not just sucking the juices. It's injecting a poison into the plant as well. Mealybugs also secrete a honeydew similar to aphids. So it's like aphid poop or mealybug pee, whatever you want to call it. And sometimes that might show up before the actual bug does or makes itself prevalent. So what you look for with a honeydew is it's attractive to what's called sooty mold. So if you see this black fungus or moldy sooty looking thing growing on your plants and it's sticky, you either have aphids or you have mealybugs. So that's a sign to look for there. Uh, Mealybug Females, of course, they lay up to 600 eggs, one one hundredth of an inch. That's about 0.3 millimeters long. They're yellow eggs within a protective mass of white cottony threads. So even the eggs like to hide out under the cotton candy masses. Uh, There's another species, the long-tailed mealybug that does not lay eggs, but has live birth. Gross, kind of similar to aphids. After they deposit their egg mass, or live young over a period of five to 10 days, the female mealybug dies. So back at you, black widow spider. This time the guy survives. The immature babies or hatchlings 
uh, look around on plants for sites in which to settle, which is in the cracks and crevices of branches and stems, succulent new growth, anywhere they can get an easy bite to eat and hide from you. Male nymphs uh, settle and spin a white waxy cocoon. Females have three instars during their growth period and are mobile throughout their lives. Now, there's even something worse than that. There are some mealybugs that are root feeders, and they are very difficult to detect. You might notice yellow or wiltering foliage that may indicate the presence of mealybugs on the roots, but yellow wilting foliage is a common symptom such as a runny nose or I don't feel good today. So the way you check for root mealybugs is you can check for those cottony masses around the drainage holes of the pots that may indicate the presence of mealybugs. But in most cases, you've got to take the root ball out of the pot and check on the roots for those white masses. They're difficult to get rid of any mealybugs because they typically wedge themselves in stem crotches, leaf folds, or other tight locations like inside the plant on your roots where washing or pesticides can't reach them. Again, you will see many, many people on the plant group say, I just take my plants and throw them in the shower. That never gets rid of everything. It's a temporary fix. Mealybugs can crawl from one plant to another. Remember, they, unlike scales, they do walk around their entire lives, especially when branches overlap, they can reach in. So one contaminated plant could spread mealybugs to all your house plants, especially if you group them around in the winter on humidity trays. Check under leaves in new leaf folds and around the growing tips for signs of infestation. And as I mentioned earlier, they also like lush foliage. So try to stay away from over-fertilizing with excess nitrogen. You can try wiping the insects with the egg masses off the plants with a cotton swab or cloth dipped in rubbing alcohol. That's a very effective first step, eliminating as much population as you can, which means there's less to spray or less to deal with later. Um, this is usually most effective on large leaf plants. Can you imagine trying that on the cracks and crevices of ferns or china dolls or other plants with many, many leaves? Um, but you want to test it first to so make sure the alcohol won't damage the plant. It may take a day or two for alcohol damage to occur on plants. Sometimes it only takes a couple hours for alcohol damage to appear on us. And as I said earlier, washing rarely eliminates the pest. Root infestations, on the other hand, of the root mealybug are very difficult to control. So sometimes just tossing the plant in the trash is often the most practical way of eliminating root mealybugs. Before you do that, if you don't have any root mealybugs or any other mealybugs on the plant, try taking some cuttings and saving the plant if you can. So controls for mealybugs include neem oil, which I think is overprescribed. It's okay. I'm not a fan of it. Uh, pyrethrins or synthetic pyrethrum is also a fairly good control for it. I am a big fan of horticultural oil. It's a heavier oil uh, that you spray on plants. It's mineral oil. It's what's used on dormant spraying about this time of year on citrus crop, not citrus crops, but fruit crops outside, apples and pear trees, etc., like that, because it smothers overwintering egg masses that are looking to wake up on these, these warm days. I do like using systemic granules <coughs> to get on and inside the plant. So as these root mealybugs are chomping away on your roots, if you have systemic granules in the soil, they will ingest that poison and it will get rid of them that way. Also, the mealybugs that are on the stems of your plants, as they're eating away at them, they ingest that insecticide, um, systemic granules. Not enough coffee yet today. So they ingest the systemic granules and that can give you anywhere from 30 to 90 days of protection. Others that are so-so as far as how well they work, but popular online remedies, insecticidal soap. I'm not a fan of insecticidal soap because number one, insecticidal soap works only by smothering the insect. It can't crawl through it later. It's the same with horticultural oil, but I like horticultural oil because I think it gives a much better coating and a much better coverage than insecticidal soap does. 
a lot of extension services will recommend soapy water. One of them even said use a detergent like Dawn. Do not use Dawn on your plants. As I said with the fungus gnat edition, Dawn is a harsh detergent. There's a misconception that when you see little furry animals and ducks and seals being cleaned off from an oil slick with Dawn, it's because Dawn is gentle to the animals. No, Dawn is a detergent. That's what you need to remove oil that's as thick as tar from these cute little animals. Um, try using a natural egg. I think there's Castile soap or something like that. But again, it's only going to be minimally effective because you're not going to really find any decent concentrations of which to use. So use one, an oil or a soap that's designed for gardening, that has instructions to use, that are not like Googling it and you find one says one use t one teaspoon per gallon. Some say use three teaspoons. It's, it's all over the road. So stick to the labeling on there. And again, hosing off, as we said, is a good way to knock down some of the population, but I doubt it's going to do very much for the cotton candy. You're better off doing that for aphids and spider mites and such like that and other bugs that get on there. And the number one approach which I'm a big fan of, is alcohol and Q-tips, or those little cotton swabs. Just simply dip the swab into the alcohol and go in between all of those crevices, almost like you're brushing your teeth. Just pull it all off, get as much of that cotton candy stuff off of there as you can before you spray your plants in the shower, before you put the insecticidal soaps on, before you use the pyrethrins and neem oil, and whatever other organic or non-organic pesticides are out there for mealybugs. So again, remove as many as you can, spray them off, isolate the plants, look for the honeydew and that black sooty mold, which may show up before you actually see any mealybugs. And also don't forget to check for root mealybugs. Those little cottony masses around the drainage holes on your pots will actually take the root ball right out and check it that way. You've been listening to the Indoor Gardener podcast with your host, Greg Dreis. Please check out our online plant shop, theindoorgarden.etsy.com for rooted cuttings, succulents, and other foliage plants. It keeps me off the streets during the winter, gives me something to do, and I just like selling plants. And again, look us up online on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And if you have any questions or comments, you can go right to our Facebook pages and send us any comments there. Please look for more episodes of the Indoor Gardener podcast coming out soon on Anchor.fm, Spotify, and soon many of the other major podcast platforms. Have yourselves a great day and good gardening. <music>